Hey everyone, this is Divine and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you're visiting this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that when I upload new videos, you're the first to know. Now we have a lot to talk about today, so let's get into it. Now there is still a lot of speculation about what may or may not have gone down the night that Megan the Stallion was shot. The most recent reports are that she was allegedly shot by Tory Lanez in a lover's bat. I spoke about that in a previous video so you guys should check that one out as well if you want to know more about what allegedly went down that night. Tasha K from Unwind with Tasha K recently gave her take on this situation backing up these claims. Well the most recent person to jump in on this narrative is Adam22. Adam22 spoke about it on his podcast No Jumper where he has interviewed many popular artists as well as underground up-and-coming talent like 6 9 Lil Yachi and XXXTentacion. Trusted Filter sources? through AD, yes, very okay. trusted sources, is that Megan and Tori have been fucking. They've been chilling. They go to this house party. Kylie Jenner is there. I heard, depending on who you want to ask, that either Tori was showing too much attention to Kylie Jenner or Kylie Jenner was showing too much attention to Tori. Either way, Meg did not appreciate it. Meg, maybe at this point in her career, has a little bit of an ego. She's feeling sure. herself. She doesn't feel like she has to deal with any disrespect. I, I heard that. Meg was violating his ass. That They got into a fight that was like bad. And I heard God that she, she was like really shitting on him. Like really like I could see her disrespecting doing the fuck. Obviously, this doesn't justify no, anything. None of that. No, none of that. But... That's what I heard is that it was like it was bad like like the the altercation that they were in and like the level of violation that he maybe was feeling obviously not a reason for any violence to occur never mind no. a gunshot but never mind a gunshot yeah that's what we heard and now he is pretty well connected in the industry so I am more inclined to trust his sources but as far as I'm concerned this is still just all speculation I'm not about to get in no trouble now I will say that no matter what went down nothing can ever excuse Tory's alleged actions against Megan Adam 22 story is pretty similar to what Tasha K said previously give or take a few details and if this is really true and they were messing around then it sounds pretty toxic and they cannot continue not to mention adam 22 spoke about her being intoxicated and i have said before that meg needs to get her drinking under control because it can be dangerous there are too many enablers around her who don't mean her any good but also she needs to want to accept the help as well in order for it to make a difference since she is a whole adult so no one can really force her to do anything now a lot of people have been clowning tori and meg on social media even though there really is nothing funny about the situation reality star drea michelle appeared on the wine and weed podcast and somehow they started talking about the megan and tori situation i guess they were speculating on what may have happened that night and she decided to give her take on it but drea started talking crazy and that's the only way to describe it or maybe crazy and dumb just check out the clip i predict that they had some sort of Bobby and Whitney love that, you know, drove them <laughs> down this snapped-esque mm. type of road. And I'm here for it. I like that. I want you to like me so much you shoot me in the foot, too. I want you to like me so much that if I'm trying to get out the car and you're like, no, sit your fucking ass she in the peeps. car. And she I'm like, peeps. no, nigga. I'm fucking getting out the car. No, you're not. He bah, you bah. Wow. Yeah. Now, after she was dragged online by Megan's fans, as was expected, she quickly posted a weak ass apology saying, I truly don't glorify domestic violence. I was trying to say just love me deeply, but while trying to be funny, I offended many, including Meg, and I'm sorry, end quote. Now, if you were trying to say just love me deeply, then why didn't you just say that? But anyway, now, Megan clearly was not happy with what Drea had to say, so she responded on Twitter saying, Dumb blank. That ain't funny. Who jokes about getting shot by a blank? She also added another tweet basically saying that she does not appreciate all the other people making jokes about her ordeal. She is not ready to talk about what happened and she will discuss it in her own time. And I have to say I agree with her on this one. Maybe not in the same words, but this kind of thing is not something you joke about. Domestic violence 
isn't funny and it's certainly not cute or romantic. She could have lost her life in the incident so I don't see how Drea felt it was appropriate to say what she did. What do you guys think about what Drea said? Let me know down in the comments. Now in other news, for those who have been living under a rock this past week, Kanye West has been spiraling out of control for the entire world to see. It appears that he's in the middle of a manic episode which has a lot of fans concerned, wondering why his family hasn't intervened. It all came to a head when he held a campaign rally in North Charleston, South Carolina. And this is his first campaign rally since announcing that he's running for president of the USA. You heard right. If you haven't already seen the footage from the rally, definitely check it out because I don't have the words to really describe what took place there. But I will say that way too many people are entertaining this show when it is evident that the man is going through a mental health crisis. There is nothing funny about what is going on and I refuse to believe that people showed up to this rally because they genuinely believe in his cause and see him as a viable candidate. This is trolling level 1000 right here. Kanye needs help and it has been evident for quite some time now. He has been gradually spiraling out of control ever since he lost his mother and ever since going public with his diagnosis. He has expressed that taking his medication stifles his creativity as an artist or whatever that means. And so he tends to come off of his medication especially when he's working on a project. He just announced a new album named after his mother Donda. So clearly this is another manic phase in his cycle of creativity. Some people are speculating that he's just doing this for clout or to market his album. That doesn't take away from the fact that this man has bipolar disorder and is clearly off of his medication. If this is all an act then give the man an Oscar already because he has me convinced. And he also has been making frantic posts on Twitter, for those who haven't noticed, speaking out about Kris Jenner, his mother-in-law, and also his wife, Kim Kardashian West. There has been much speculation about these posts as fans feel like he's spilling some serious tea. He has also been making a lot of posts about North and his other children, specifically focusing on North, just like he did during the rally when he said that he and Kim almost aborted her. But he kept saying that Chris will never be able to exploit North. He has posted pictures of his children, one of which was captioned, West children will never do Playboy. His wife Kim has appeared in Playboy before, and based on his Twitter post, directed at Chris, maybe he feels like she is to blame for that. That could explain his posts about North. Maybe he feels like she could be next, or maybe he feels that like they could be grooming her for that kind of move. He has been standing on Chris's neck with his post, calling her a white supremacist and Chris Jong-un. He also posted that she and Kamye, which is probably Corey Gamble, her boyfriend, have to stay away from his children. So clearly Kanye has some serious issues with Chris Jenner if we are to take his Twitter post seriously. He mentioned that Chris and Kim were trying to have him admitted to a mental health facility and that they were coming to the ranch in Wyoming with a doctor to lock him up. It seems like Chris has been ignoring his calls as well since he posted a series of unanswered messages that he has sent to Chris urging her and Kim to call him now. He's been going back and forth with his posts at some points expressing anger at Kim and talking about divorce and the next minute saying that he loves his wife and directing more of his anger to Kris Jenner. He made another post about Kim and Meek Mill and how Kim met up with Meek to talk about prison reform at a hotel. <laughs> he made it seem as if he knows that the meeting had nothing to do with that. Then he said that Meek basically had his back but expressed disappointment in Kim as if she was a real aggressor. Now there has been lots of speculation for some time now about Kim and her dealings with Meek Mill. So of course this caused the entire internet to go wild trying to figure out if he was confirming that she cheated on him with Meek or at least tried to. Now I feel like I should point out that this was not some intimate meetup between Meek and, and Kim. They were at a dinner at a restaurant inside of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in Los Angeles and they certainly were not alone at this meeting. I don't even know if they sat beside each other or exchanged many words since it was a dinner meeting with other people so unless he has proof that something happened then he should stop the speculation since based on reports it may be an over exaggeration on his part. Now, since Kanye's most recent Twitter rampage, Meet made a simple tweet saying, 
lifted his cap. Come on. Now, that wasn't saying a lot, but a lot of fans have taken that as him directly denying Kanye's claims. He didn't make a specific reference to anything, so honestly it could be referring to anything at this point, but people are associating his post with Kanye's Twitter vomit since his post seems to have gone up around the same time that Kanye said what he said. He also randomly mentioned Larsa Pippen, and this caused a whole bunch of other speculation because recently some of the Kardashians have unfollowed Larsa who is a very close family friend because allegedly she may have slept with Tristan Thompson who is Chloe's baby daddy. That caused a lot of drama to erupt on the internet because of course you know they tried to blacklist Jordan Woods over him kissing her and yet if Larsa really did sleep with him why is it that they have quietly unfollowed her but they're not bringing that same energy to her so I think a lot of people were angry about that as well if we're supposed to take him saying her name to mean all of that. But most of these posts have since been deleted, but Kanye's Twitter fingers weren't fast enough because there are tons of screenshots all over the internet. This is a whole mess, and I am sure it is highly embarrassing for his wife, who not only has her kids to consider, but her brand as well, which is highly lucrative. She has since spoken out about the situation with Kanye on Instagram, saying, As many of you know, Kanye has bipolar disorder. Anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. I've never spoken publicly about how this has affected us at home because I'm very protective of our children and Kanye's right to privacy when it comes to his health. But today I feel like I should comment on it because of the stigma and misconceptions about mental health. Those that understand mental illness or even compulsive behavior know that the family is powerless unless the member is a minor. People who are unaware or far removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves have to engage in a process of getting help no matter how hard family and friends try. I understand Kanye is subject to criticism because he is a public figure and his actions at times can cause strong opinions and emotions. He's a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressures of being an artist and a black man who experienced a pain loss of his mother and has to deal with the pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder. Those who are close with Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions. Living with bipolar disorder does not diminish or invalidate his dreams and his creative ideas, no matter how big or unobtainable they may feel to some. That is part of his genius and, as we have all witnessed, many of his big dreams have come true. We as a society talk about giving grace to the issue of mental health as a whole, however we should also give it to the individuals who are living with it in times when they need it the most. I kindly ask that the media and public give us the compassion and empathy that is needed so that we can get through this. Thank you for those who have expressed concern for Kanye's well-being and for your understanding. With love and gratitude, Kim Kardashian West. Now, I don't know anything about what motivates Kim Kardashian West, so whoever wants to speculate about whether or not this comes from a place of love for Kanye or is just an attempt to save her brand, that's up to you. I will say that she may be an enabler for him, which isn't good. He's very talented and creative, but by now she should know when he's experiencing a manic episode. And she seems to give in to many of his whims, promoting them like his current run for president even though mentally he's not in the best place right now to focus on such an important task that affects so many people. Yes, it's great to be a supportive partner, but if you know your spouse is not in a good place right now, this is not the time to be giving in to his whims. However, I do acknowledge that mental health issues are very complex and serious and that it's hard to really understand the dynamics behind it if you have never experienced loving someone who suffers from a serious disorder disorder like bipolar disorder. It can be managed although it isn't easy for those who experience it but it all depends on the person's willingness to cooperate and consistently take their medication especially as an adult. Kanye clearly is not about that life and he 
refuses to take medication, especially when he's working on new projects. He said this time and time again. He has said before that it stifles his creativity, so it must be a real battle to get him on board with treatment to stabilize him. A lot of people think that Kim can just hold him down and force him to take medication. And it's easy for people to say what they would do if they were in the situation when they're obviously not experiencing something like this. He does have rights and since he hasn't physically hurt himself or anyone else, it will be very difficult for her or her family to do something about his erratic behavior right now. So I definitely think that in that regard, people need to cut her some slack, but the enabling needs to stop because it's clearly not helping matters either. Kanye needs a good dose of reality and I don't know who's going to be able to give it to him because he doesn't really seem to listen to a lot of people, but I really hope hope that eventually he accepts the help that he needs sooner rather than later for the sake of his kids if nothing else. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video. Also turn on your notifications so that whenever I post a new video you're the first to know. Until next time.